Good afternoon, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. We are at 5212 Northeast 28th Court here in Vancouver. Located just to the right of the front doorway. Second deck board out. You could kind of pick this deck board or this one. Uh, this I chose this one right in front of the pump conduit here just so it wasn't right in the walkway of the front door. So underneath here you've got a four inch ABS clean out. We're gonna check the overall condition, serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. Um, this is a line that has a, uh, it's called an ejector system. So right in front of the porch, you have a pump. It's a big black lid, can't miss the thing. And what that is, if you notice when you come down into here, you're down at the base of a pretty good dip in the road. Uh, there is not enough, the main lateral out in the street would have to be an extraordinarily deep main lateral um, to ever be able to gravity feed a line from here out to the street. So instead what they do is they do a pump system. So that, that pump there serves the entire house. Once it fills up to a certain level, um, it kicks on a float, very similar to how a sump pump works, and then it ejects that water to the main lateral. Anyway, I've dropped in here. It's kind of a tricky spot to see. Um, the exact direction we're flowing here. So at first here, I'm going to have, oh geez. actually I'm going to run water on the inside. This hose bib here is just leaking on me. I'm gonna push out here just a little bit. See if we're going the right way towards the pump. Yep, that is the tank right there. So what we're going to do is I'll, I'll do a, uh, have a toilet flush done here really quickly. Only about six feet out or so is where that tank is at. All right, here comes the toilet flush. All right, that's the toilet flush there shooting past the camera. Anyway, that's the inner workings of the pump there. And so from the pump out, it, it they, they can be looked at. It's a much trickier process for back pressure reasons. Um, the ejector pipe on these things is not a big four inch pipe like you'd have on uh, like the pipe going into it. Um, for pressurized reasons, they, they do a two inch ejector pipe typically. It's much smaller um, and you they can be cameraed um, I've never seen it done in 13 years, but it is doable. Um, I don't get involved in that end of things, but typically is required for back pressure purposes, the, the ejector pipe from the tank on out to wherever it, it goes. And some of these eject all the way until they hit the main. Some of them will eject till they hit the top of the hill. Then you might have a gravity fed section that takes over once you get way up there. But um, any part of the line that's pressurized is full of sewage at any given time. And so they have to be purged you have to basically empty that entire line out uh, in order to get them clear so you can run a camera through. So it's it's doable. I've just, I've never seen it done. It's it's a lot of effort. And as I, as I understand it, um, just talking to the tenants here, it sounds like this tank was recently redone or, or, or at least had something fixed on it. So from the sounds of it, it sounds like whatever the pump was dealing with is, has been corrected as far as I know. But that's, you know, from that point forward, that's where I generally recommend you talk to a plumber. I mostly deal with the, uh, the gravity fed part of the line leading up to that point. Anyway, and it, and it looks like you've got a little bit of debris at the top of the pipe there. From what I understand, it sounds like the tank did have some kind of issue at some point recently. So that would explain why there's deposits up there at the top of the pipe. A blockage happened, or not necessarily a blockage, but the, uh, the tank probably wasn't functioning, which allowed the tank to overload and fill up. And if that ever does happen, I'll show you here in just a second. Let's see if I get, yeah, there we did. We got, got to flip around there. So right now we're going back to the foundation wall. And I, I focus on everything that's underground. Once you go through this foundation wall, the piping from this point forward is all exposed piping in the crawl space. That's stuff the home inspector can take a look at when they're down there. I focus on the stuff that's underground. And you neck down to three inch pipe right as you go back in. 
So you do have some debris at the top of the pipe. It's something you could jet out. Uh, by and large, though, the only reason anything would be coming into contact with that and where that could even affect functionality is you'd have to be getting something down line that's fairly good size it could run into it. But you've got some spots here that have got some pretty thick ridges. So it's something I will recommend you do, clean the line out. Just understand though that, you know, what you've got right now is still a, a good two inch or more leeway there, if not better by and large. So it would take a fairly good size item to come into contact with the top of the pipe. And if whatever you're putting down the line is large enough to come into contact with the pipe, that item already runs the risk of causing a blockage on its own. And as you see, my, as my camera's going through here, a lot of this stuff is fairly loose. It breaks loose pretty easily. Um, you could honestly, you could probably get away with this, just running water and running an auger through that to rattle through the pipe just to knock the stuff loose. Um, and then it would flush out into the tank and off it goes. So anyway, the line itself there looks great. You do have some buildup. I'll recommend that be cleaned. But that that's, that's uh, in, the, in the world of sewer stuff, Clean the line out like that's pretty small potatoes. And by and large, that debris there should not be affecting functionality. Not unless you're putting large, large size items down the line, but it would not be a bad idea to get that cleared out of there. So if you, if you go through the effort of cleaning the line, I would always recommend you rescope it just to show that the work was done. Um, but all the pipe itself here, all that is in good condition, has good flow, uh, you know, and, and by and large, it has good flow. I can't say it's 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 100% perfect flow because you do have some buildup there. The good thing is though, it's all at the top of the pipe, not in the flow line. If you're gonna have buildup in your sewer line, that's where you want it to be. So lines functioning at this time, you'll have improved functionality. You'll more so help mitigate any blockage risk, um, especially if you have little kids in the house flushing large you know items down the line, large balls of toilet paper, stuff like that. That's mostly where that buildup never ever cause any kind of issues. Now, if you have that buildup, that same level of buildup in the flow line, it would be a very, very different story. My tune on that would be very different. I would be highly recommending you clean the line out. So it's still a worthwhile thing to do. You're just not going to get as much benefit out of it as if you uh, were uh, cleaning out the flow line area. And then as far as the tank goes, um, I have heard that pump turn on already and eject. So from that standpoint, the pump appears to be functioning. It would be worthwhile to get a little bit of uh, info on what was repaired on that pump. I don't know if the pump itself was replaced, uh, but as it relates to that, when you have a whole home ejector system, this, these, these obviously get used very frequently. And be before I get off on that tangent, this right here is your sewer, this is the ejector alarm system. If that pump fails, as long as this is all put together properly, if that thing overloads, that alarm will go off. It's very, very loud. I mean, it's like louder than a fire alarm. It's very high pitched usually. If you hear that, you wanna make sure you stop running any water at that point in time so you don't run the risk of overloading the tank and backing up into the house. And that's where you wanna call the plumber to come out here. Uh, but as, there, as it relates to these ejector systems, a lot of people have them in basements for basement bathrooms, you know, the guests use once in a while. Pumps like that usually have a fairly good longevity in them because they're not used very frequently. A whole home ejection system like this is used all, all the time. The pump is often going off multiple times a day. Um, because of that, they get used more and they tend to have a shorter lifespan. So what from the most of the plumbers I've talked to over the years, um, what you should typically expect out of a whole home system like this is, is about seven years or so before the pump fails. Um, you might get longer, you might get you might get less than that. Just a lot of it depends on, on what you're putting down the line. Abusive items versus proper items are gonna be nicer, you know. Proper stuff is gonna be nicer on that pump than, than if you're putting wipes down the line, for instance. It's just uh, less wear and tear on the pump. And the frequency of usage. A smaller household with one or two people in it versus a house with, with a whole bunch of kids where it's getting used all the time. Again, the more that pump is used, the more likely it is to wear out sooner. So as we sit here today, we have good flow all the way to the tank. Uh, again, it could be improved upon by cleaning it, mostly to help mitigate any blockage risk from larger items that your you know kids might put down the line, something like that. Um, all the pipe we just scoped there, all of it is intact, good shape. You just could use some cleaning, that is it. And I have, again, seen the pump turn on and eject at least one time, so. And I imagine it probably went off more than a few times when the home inspection was taking place. They usually run quite a lot of water. <laughs> Anyhow, line is functioning at this time. From the tank on out, that part of it I can't tell you. The uh, the nice thing about pumps, not that they, they don't have 
you know, similar issues as your average gravity fed sewer line. Things like roots can still affect them. But a lot of gradation issues like bellies in the line, things like that, don't affect these in the same manner because they're intended, that ejector part of the line is intended to have water in it all the time. Um, so it, it's, you, you have a little less finickiness um, on that end of things because everything's being forced through there with a, with a rather powerful pump. Um, so, and a lot of these, I don't know what style of pump was put in. Um, generally the company that I hear that makes the best one, I, I, I don't have one myself, but every plumber I've talked to always says to try and install a Zoller. Um, they, they are a specifically made pump just for sewage ejection. Some companies use modified boat pumps, uh, but a lot of these have a grinder system in them. So whatever's going down line, a lot of them have a grinder that actually blends everything up into a slurry. Um, so they, they, you know, they can handle abusive items. You want to try not to do that, but they do have that, that in place there to help bust stuff up into fine pieces so it gets blasted out properly.